For this quick lesson, we're going to cover what smoothing groups are and how to use them, as well as using subdivision surfaces inside of the designer tool. To begin, we can grab a cylinder, and I can click once, and I can click twice, and the third time is a charm, and I have my height and my radius. So I'm going to go back in here, escape, click on the X axis, pressing Control D, I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to move up this piece, and I'm going to delete the bottom, because when we add a subdivision surface on it, it will actually collapse inward. It'll be even more apparent once we get to that step. So over here on the right side, we can notice that with our cylinder that we made, we have a little bit of a harsh edging around this, and we can see it also on this one, so it's universal on both of them. To remove this to begin with, what we're going to use is a smoothing group. And a smoothing group will use something called Fong Edge Breaks, and it will kind of use a soft interpolation across them based on an angular value. Like this right here is 90 degrees, so when I smooth that, it will be able to have an edge break and give it the top corner piece that makes it look like it's a soda can or something. Otherwise, it would be extremely beveled or possibly problematic in the render. So let's go to Groups, Smoothing Group, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all the faces here, and we can already see that our angular threshold is set to 45, which is far more than enough to basically call this data. So I'm going to go ahead and do an Auto Smooth, and clicking it, can now escape outward. We can see that it's a lot more smooth on the edges based on where it's at. You can still kind of see it right there, but when we come over here, none of it is shown. So that's a basic overview on how smoothing groups are done and how you enact them or enable them inside of the designer tool. The next one is the subdivision surfaces. This one is in tools, and we can click subdivision. And what we're going to do is we're going to add one amount of subdivision to it. So we can see that our object is collapsing inward, like I said, and if I hadn't removed the bottom piece, it would have collapsed into a ball. But we want to replicate the same kind of work that this has. In order to do that, we can use something called creasing. And creasing, with us selecting the edges around the top, will basically tell the engine, hey, on these edges, we don't want it to actually collapse inward and subdivide. So to do this, we select our edges, so I'm going to cover all of them, and then I'm going to hold down Alt and deselect the bottom ones, because I'm only after this top portion. So let's go back to subdivision, and with these selected, we can add them to the creases. So clicking Add, we can now have creasing that mimics or replicates the same type of surface as this one has. And this is even more apparent once you get into advanced shapes, but for a basic overview, these two examples kind of show you how both of these work together, and maybe a solution is better on one side or the other, depending on what you need in your level.